In the state of Michigan, November 15th is a holiday that ranks right up there with the likes of Christmas and Easter. Over half a million hunters covered in blaze orange hit state and private property in pursuit of white-tailed deer. And a giant percent of the overall deer harvest happens in just the first two days of that rifle season. I look forward to that November morning each and every year, but this year I have a September date circled on my calendar. See, the team and I are taking a group of kids out for an early youth season hunt on the very property that Jeff and I shot our first deer. We have a house packed with excited kids, a woods full of white-tailed deer, and memories to be made. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. Um, what do we do? What are we gonna do when the deer come back? Okay, so if it comes from left, let's, let's say left to right, and let's say it's just cruising across the field, it looks like it's not gonna stop. Mm -hmm. You only wanna shoot the deer when it's stopped. Okay. and broadside. You don't want to shoot it head on. You don't want to shoot it when it's butts facing you. We want broadside shots, mm -hmm. which means the whole side of it showing. So let's, let, let's say it comes from left to right and it's cruising. Mm -hmm. In order to stop it, because it may happen quick, you may have to shoot within 15 seconds out of nowhere. Yeah. I will, at the right time, make a sound. Yeah. It's a bird. <laughs> They do that to you. Yeah, hey, the squirrels are the worst. They make you think they're dead. But I'll make a sound that will sound like I'm trying to imitate a sheep. Mm -hmm. Ignore me, but it will stop the deer. <laughs> and the deer will stop and it'll look this direction and you'll have five to, to, to 10 seconds at but the limit. Like well, like and you don't shoot unless it's broadside. I mean, a deer could come in and we might not get a shot at it. That happens. Mm -hmm. It's not likely because you're a killer, but it is possible. So when it comes in, a lot of times they'll be moving real slow and you'll have an opportunity. But sometimes they're cruising through quick and I'll stop them. But you only have a few seconds then to shoot. So you always want to be ready. I know it's easy to be texting boys and all the things you girls do. <laughs> Eating bread and donuts. It's getting all fat and sassy, but you got to focus. <laughs> For the afternoon sit, we decided to head back to the same elevated blind with Ashley. She was comfortable with that setup and seeing a few deer in the morning had our spirits hopeful. As many warm afternoon deer hunts tend to play out, the action started out pretty slow, with the exception to a little doe Ashley and I nicknamed Donkey on account of her appearance. But as the afternoon carried on, we started to see some deer in the distance, and finally a young buck came within the magical 150 yard mark and Ashley decided she wanted him. And just like that, we were immersed in a moment that none of us would ever forget. The best part about this hunt was Ashley's smile. It's that ear-to-ear -ear grin reserved specifically for first-time hunters, and it sure let me know I've got a hunting buddy for life. When we got back to the house, I cleaned Ashley's deer and prepared the heart, tenderloins, and tongue for the grill rack over an open fire. Now Ashley's the kid that orders chicken fingers at nearly every restaurant we go to. So I was pretty curious how she might handle this situation. And I was pretty excited too. This would also be the first time I've ever had deer tongue. It's um a little rubbery. Is it weird biting a tongue in your mouth knowing that it's not your own? <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Your tongue is tasting its tongue? I, I don't mind it, but it's got a full flavor. Would you consider that French in a deer? <laughs> nice. My tough girl who's tough enough to shoot a deer, overcome all the odds, gonna try the tongue right out of her own deer. What do you think? It's like eating the fat off steak. Tastes like turkey. Tastes like turkey. Yeah. We finished up our caveman style dinner with the deer heart being everyone's overall favorite. How do you like it? It was time to hit our bunks because tomorrow it would be Jacob and Jeffrey's last shot at a whitetail. Lucky for them, Jacob had his doe tag, and a nice one stepped right out. Nice shot, nice shot. 
Man, we sat here and waited for <laughs> like four <laughs> hours, three and a half hours, and <laughs> see nothing. And then just one just moseys on out. Well, our style is to fall asleep. Lazy Sunday, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode, we targeted white-tailed deer with a great group of kids. Their excitement and willingness to participate in all aspects of the hunt reminded me of my early days of field. My dad would drop me off at my blind with my grandfather's 30-30, a knife, and a flashlight. I'd sit and watch the sunrise through the trees and listen for any sign of deer. The lessons I learned in those woods would last a lifetime, but I wouldn't have been sitting there without my dad's influence. And that serves as a great example. We must actively engage kids in hunting, fishing, and conservation. Our planet and its resources are counting on it. Proverbs chapter 22 says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it.